What is up? And we're live. How are you guys doing? What's up, I guys? A, I got a pop collar. That's all I want to say. That, that's how. You, you, that's you how shouldn't do a pop collar, Brad, because you have no neck. So, like, the pop collar just, like, immediately touches your chin. It just makes you look shorter, I think. I don't know. You can't, you can't make me shorter. It, I, this is the maximum shortness you can have. <laughs> <laughs> if you put pra, uh, uh, Brad into one of those compressor types, it, nothing will happen. The compre- yeah, just, it's the compressor's like, minimum height already. Like, this thing is broken. It <laughs> starts going up at, the, at that point in time. That's pretty funny. Uh, he's at maximum <laughs> density. <laughs> maximum density. He's like, a, he's like a white loses. dwarf. It's like a <laughs> teaspoon of him just shatters you. Anyways, uh, how you, are you guys you doing? The galactic white dwarf. The galactic I, I white dwarf. Just a generic white dwarf. dwarf. He, is a, <laughs> just, well, he is a white dwarf. He's just explaining <laughs> who I am. A white. <laughs> no, no, no. I was talking about the galactic one. Yeah. The take take some science classes, bro. Learn some things. Seriously, it, it would help you out. You would know that bleach in your body does not cure viruses. I'm, I'm just saying, like it could help you. Yeah. So. I gotta stop drinking that then. You need to stop drinking a lot of things. Word on the street was that you don't remember your weekend. Basically, I it's just one day. I mean, that's, that's, what, whole that's, what, that's what you thought, and then you woke up and they're like, "Hey, it's Monday, by the way." You're like of of the next week. <laughs> so, <laughs> due to heavy drinking or just generic medical problems? No, Both, in actually. combination. I, I, basically, I I felt really, really, really bad for a few days in a row, and then I went over to stream some games and have some fun. And I was super mad about the fact that I effectively had a 72 hour migraine. <laughs> that uh, I decided to drink all of the wine in Toledo. All of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I, I just woke up somewhere else. Luckily, it was my house. Like it. Yeah. So, guys, today's topic is essentially how do I get better at tournament play? How do I get better at playing 40K? What do I do to go from a 3-2 and two record to a 4-1 and one record? What do I do to, from going from a losing record, a 2-3 and three record, to maybe maybe getting a little bit better, going to, back to the 3-2 and two and, and, and so on and so forth? So, I think we're going to kick and things this- off. Go ahead, Daniel. What this, were you going to say? For, for reference, it's not a um, it's not a request for from the viewers. It's a request from Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, guys, guys. <laughs> Damn, burn, sick burn. Yeah, Ugh. I do like this topic a lot because our original topic of just straight up talking about noodling for every show. Hey, hey, <laughs> get off noodling, man. Why are you guys always attacking my my future my future profession? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to retire and be a professional noodler somewhere in Mississippi. Noodler? I don't know if that's what they're called. Are they called noodlers? I'm not, I have no idea. I, oh, you made this up to me. I didn't even know that existed until you told me. <laughs> yep. Oh, and and we do have a request from Alex. Alex, we're th- we're thinking about making a video on that admec question you had, buddy. Uh, from the last pot from actually you messaged you messaged us directly or me. Um, we might make a might make a whole video on that. Um, so so stay tuned for that. Probably come out on YouTube. I'll, I haven't even told these guys about it yet, but we're going to talk about it after. So, uh, but today <laughs> like we're definitely doing a video. Yeah, we're definitely doing a video on it for sure. Um, <laughs> Which Daniel and I don't know about. So. Yeah, you guys will have input. It's about AdMac. Daniel will like it, and it's about Necrons. You, you Brad will totally like it. Disclose to the entire way of this process. It's you decide what we talk about, and me and Brad just talk. Facts. <laughs> you did ask. He, Alan did ask for topics, and we gave topics, and he went, "Those are stupid. This is what we're going to talk about." It's <laughs> pretty much what happened. Yeah. Um, so let's start off with preparation. What do you guys think? You know, what what should if you're a two and three player? Let's start there. Let's start at a two and three or a one and four player. Uh, at, you know, and that's that's kind of where you where you've normally historically placed at large events. What what type of preparation do you recommend for this group? Why don't we start off with you, Brad? This should be a this should be a baseball softball question for you with the consulting services. I do though. I think that the, one of the, my biggest things is one you have to kind of just at least casually know things that are in the that have been placing at the top. You know what I mean? Just take a quick look on Google and see what's been winning at local terms. And then I go through a checklist when I build any list. I kind of I go. I have to have two to three hard target removal, which means that I have to kill like a dreadnought, a tank or something. I have to have things that can move up and take the objectives. So I need at least two to three of those. I need 
uh, two to three units that have enough attacks to deal with Horde. So I go through like a little checklist of does my army have these basic things? Because if you don't, if you show up to a, a tournament and you just don't have tools in your toolbox, you're just not going to be able to win games. You're going to have matchups that are really terrible. You have to have the ability of like your opponent does absolutely nothing. What are you doing to win? What is your win condition? You know, do you have an army that can take secondaries? You know, do what secondaries would you take as long as your opponent has nothing that you specifically can do to them? So let's break uh, that up real quick. So let's let's kind of categorize it in a way that is e- easier for someone to follow in terms of like a checklist. Where where would you start right away? How about you, Daniel? So Brad listed off a whole bunch of things. So that, now let's narrow that in. I'm a two and three, one and four player. <laughs> Where is the what is the first thing on my checklist to, to now get better from going? I want to go from a one and four to a two and three or from a two and three to a three and two. I think preparation starts long before you even contemplate your next tournament. So if I wanted to become better at 40K, I would try to find people in the vicinity of where I live that actually are good at 40K and start getting practice games against them. Because something I've noticed is if you're playing in your local meta with your local guys, you never become better. So I would start even, you know, with that. Just find some good guys that typically are better than you, like four and one players or whatever you want to call them, and get games with them. It so, doesn't even matter about what army you play. Just so, get the games in and understand what they're doing different than you. So that's the reps philosophy, right? And Brad, so... You, you, you laid out a lot of things when you just kind of walk through prep. Let's say, I, I think you necessarily agree with Daniel on reps, right? I, you guys are oh, 100%. You reps guys are same reps, on reps. Right. I'm the guy who's like, reps are n- n- meaningless. Um, no, but then I mess I up everything you, at the tournament. Yeah, but yeah. to be reps <laughs> if you don't play good players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes yeah. And no on that, I, 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 I disagree. So I was going to, let me pivot. Let me pivot real quick because I think, I think Brad disagrees with that part. Uh, Brad, I, I've heard you in the past, correct me if I'm wrong. You've said in the past, though, that. If you can't find higher caliber players, there's still ways to make sure that you get better in your local gaming group. I think you, you, you've said that to me multiple times. Can you walk through that? Cause, cause because Dan- Daniel's approach think, is find the better players. See, if you can, especially a lot of guys just aren't in, a, you know, they aren't in an area, they don't have the lifestyle. You know what I mean? They can put in some games, but they can't get out as much with that. The biggest thing is, is that you're talking through your games, resetting your games. You need to be, even if you're playing, uh, the other guy that's really that's equal level or below you you have to talk through exactly what you're doing each turn and is this the most optimal play and that's how you should be playing your test games is not just to try to win this game but to be I, better in every game i agree brad but what if let's say you're in a gaming group with four other guys and you're the best in the group and you show up to tournaments and you go one four you know how who's gonna point you to improve your game who's gonna tell you like are you really utilizing that unit in an optimal way that's Uh, not a discussion you're gonna have (laughs) you're gonna call you're the best guy and you're not there right yeah i mean i totally agree with you that if you're good you can practice with lesser good players because you can you can say don't do that do this or you can't forget stuff. That's how we play when we practice for DTC. Like, no, don't do that. It seems stupid. Or don't forget that. Or you can re- re-roll that. Or even even in going back to dice rolls. Like, that was a really dodgy dice roll. Yet say it was average. So you passed half the four plus saves, for that's, example. That's an interesting point. So I'm going to pa- I'm gonna take a pause real quick on there. Because what I got out of that is what I do a lot. And we, I've done it on stream. Actually, we've had streamed games where we're trying to get we're trying to get more stream games in on YouTube every week on Fridays or Saturdays. We're working through timelines with COVID and everything. But we had a game with Aaron Towler, and I had really bad dice. And then we sat back, we did the calculation, and we said, even if you calculate it, the dice are not good for this scenario. So let's reset and let's go back. So Daniel, you think? Do you think that approach of resetting your games when in practice and restarting? Will, will only advance you more and prepare you more for certain situations? Is that what you're saying? No, no I, I, I think it's when you're playing, let's say Brad plays, I don't know, the 1-4 the player, because that's the guy he has in his local area. He can still get better at his game uh, playing that player because he can then put constraints or he can, he can 
uh, disallow his opponent to do stupid moves. And that way he can still practice. That's sort of what I'm saying. Uh, obviously, the 1 4 player is going to have great games because he's going to learn a lot. The problem is if you're in a meta with only 1 4 players, uh, because it's hard to learn from people that don't challenge you. Uh, that's sort of what I'm saying. But, but yeah, I mean, even reps, even those reps are okay, but I would seek out better players. That's where I would start if I really wanted to become better at 40k. Or pay, you know, a service for someone to help me with coaching or, I don't, I don't know, whatever. Uh, but just to get my uh, opinion and knowledge and know-how about the game challenged by someone that actually knows the game better. Okay. I, I agree on that. There's, it's just the thing is that some people just don't always have that option. So yep. it's like I'm trying to get like a a little bit of it for everybody. You know what I mean? Yep. Myself, I, I I play a lot of games of 40K. You know what I mean? And I make sure I try it. Well, when we're not being shut down. This is my sad face, by the way, because I had three tournaments in four weeks. And now I have zero tournaments in four weeks coming up here. Yeah. That's COVID. It's COVID, <sighs> bro. Uh, I will so, see so what okay. I'm saying doesn't apply for everyone. Yeah, so yeah. We yeah. Can so go let's back to sort of let's pivot out. Or, let's let's pivot yeah. out of uh, out of finding the best players. So it, that's not really a checklist item. I think that's just a normal thing that you should be doing. I agree with Daniel 100. percent You should be finding quality players or players similar to your skill level, and if not, putting restrictions on yourself in playtest games so you can still get practice. I think that that's definitely sound sound advice. Outside of that, though. What what are actions you yourself can do to make sure that you're better prepared for your next tournament? I mean, like, for example, if I were to throw one out, something that I try to do is I try to understand where the meta is at. What are the most, like, popular lists? What am, I, what am I expecting to see, and how does it play? What do you guys think about that? I'm a huge, huge, because I am make I always make lists for every army, kind of just to know it. But I think the number one thing before you even just do that is know your own list, though. Yeah. You have to know everything about if you're going to know, if you're only going to know one thing, know your army inside and out. I would rather play an army that I'm very familiar with and very experienced with than an army that maybe is 15 percent better uh, because of the fact that I know exactly how to play that army. And when the dice go bad and the wheels fall off, I can still have a chance because I've been in that situation more and more times. Yeah. Uh, obviously you need to know what you're going to face against. And that goes into building against it though. If you just show up in a tournaments and you have lists that just always loses to Daniel's Harlequins or loses to your neck you know what I mean? Like you have to, but it, before you ever got to that tournament, you should have made changes. You know what I mean? So you have to keep, uh, adjusting your list so that you're not getting into tournaments with, with, a, with an army that doesn't have a chance against, the most popular armies, the, the yeah. armies that are doing well. So yeah. that's a big, that, that's like step zero basically is, is getting, you know, getting your army to a competitive level, including your, then your skills are going to take the longer part. So, so would it be safe to say then a one and four player or a two and three player are probably taking some units that are not optimized units, probably, right? We can assume 100%. that, right? And if they were to just understand kind of what they should, what they're expecting to see on the other side of the table, Maybe they can drop some of those optimized, non-optimized units from their army, and, and and try to pivot towards a strategy that's more anti what they're expecting to see as their opposition. Right, just like we did, we were just talking about, like Daniel's making his Harlequin army, and he has certain certain. It doesn't matter what the army is; you always have units that have a certain battlefield role. Period. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to be at the table and your opponents like. Look at me. I'm no, not that one. Surprise! <laughs> this one. <laughs> it's like, hey, uh, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't, you fell back, you can't charge, you know? And they're like, surprise! I got a strat or something, you know? And <laughs> they're able to do something you had no idea about. So, well, I, I, I think to touch base on one of the most important points, uh, Brad is, uh, and what, what you were saying as well, is to minimize your gotcha moments, right? Yeah. So, definitely know your army, but. I think it's equally important to know your opponents. Army. I think it's so, more. I think it's more important. I was going to pivot there actually, yeah. but go ahead, yeah. Daniel. Spend spend time reading all the codexes. Spend time, you know, building lists because yes. just reading it and building lists in it is very different because you don't understand how much of each unit you get in there. You don't understand sort of the the output that will generate with specific strats and stuff. So, so spend some time 
understanding the the mechanics of of uh, the oppo- your opponent's armies. Yeah, I would say uh, every list you build, I, every yeah. list you build. This is my take. I'm curious what you think, Daniel, because me and you agree 100. percent I I think building lists is really really cr- crucial for anybody. You should be getting the books, building the lists. However, you can get the books, get them. However, you can, and then build lists as much as you can. Even if you're just using Battle Scribe. Make army lists because every time you make an army list for a faction that you don't know about, you have to learn it. You have to read the relics. You have to read the strats. You have to read yeah. the troops. You have to read the HQs. You have to figure out how do I put together an army list? And then just by doing that, you will understand a certain percentage of the codex. It's almost as if yeah. you got in a game against them, right? If you've yeah. never played against Admech, you should go build an Admech list because yeah, when, once or, you start making fine. it, you'll be like, whoa. Yeah. Every single time you build another list, my advice to you is build a different archetypes. Like if yeah. you're going to build an orc list, you don't know anything about orcs, make an orc list of all boys. Figure out how that works the best. What HQs does that list take? What, what elements does that list take? Then build an orc list that has all buggies. Then build an orc list that needs to use mega knobs. Then build an orc list that has battle wagons. If you do that with every codex, over time, you will pick up everything about those codexes. Yeah. And that will and inherently get you experience in the in, in the game. Yeah, experienced players don't necessarily know what so, uh, soaring spite does uh, for harlequins, but they can uh, ask the right questions to understand what they're facing. Right, so they can say, "Is soaring spite the the guys that can shoot Malta?" So, so I think this. From, so that's a really good point. Yeah. So that's a really good point. So the advice we we've been giving so far, right? The advice about understanding what your opponent's going to bring to the event, understanding the combinations and the tricks that they're going to try to use to minimize gotcha moments, understanding your army list and finding good players to play with on a regular basis. I think that's really core fundamental feedback for one and four, two and three players, three and two players, four and one players. Daniel, go ahead. Elaborate on that point you were just making right now about asking your opponent. I think this is the skill where that turns on. We're talking about at the tournament then. Correct. Now, yeah. now we're, we're showing up because I, th- I have a bunch of pregame. Good, uh, start yeah, with that, but, 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 but also before the tournament, actually. I mean, when you're looking at lists and you see, okay, what's the best Harlequin list now? Why does it have five boats and five units of fusion pistols when you can't shoot fusion from a you know, moving boat because it's et cetera, et cetera? That go into the codex and, and try to figure the list out. Yeah. But also at the table, of course. I... I I read all the codexes and I did, I play most of the armies, but I still don't know you know what um, specific Eldar type of you know craft worlds have for abilities. So yeah. I ask is you know uh, is this which the one, one is that again? Where you yeah. get minus one to hit, or is this the one yeah, with by, this stratagem? By sort no of, means, uh, yeah. By no means is anyone going to learn everything. That's not the intent. No. But the the idea is to get your your head around kind of the archetypes and the play styles of each army. But before we go on to to at the tournament, uh, Brad, what else did you want to touch on in terms of preparation? And you can you can target any level, um, obviously, you know, because you know you're clearly at the uh, that eight and one level. So that's a little that's a little <laughs> high. Uh, for most people, but maybe bring it down so for the, the mere mortals, point, it. the mere mortals <laughs> so that you can talk about. Well, one day we'll get a nine and oh person on here to talk yeah. about that. This Wait hurts. a minute. Did I so win much. a nine and oh twice now? Never mind. <laughs> Multiple times. I'm going to your house. What, what, uh, <laughs> what stealing things from your house when I what, come? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> give, give me some feedback. You can steal whatever you want. I have to, I drive you to the train, so I will frisk your bag. <laughs> you just take it back. Uh, You're like, Brad, can I have my toaster back now? <laughs> like, I clearly see you have it in your hand. <laughs> I, I have a so, sick toaster, actually. <laughs> uh, the biggest thing, I, I really think it's a big thing is that you have to have the, the, the amount of battlefield roles that you're going to need, need to win the game. Like, right now, if I'm looking at my list and I'm thinking about who I'm going to play, I'm going to play you two guys, and you guys did absolutely nothing. I have to have a battle plan to make that a reality. Like I, w- I need to be able to win in points right there. Like how am I winning the game? Like who's going to be taking my objectives? Who's going to be taking my secondaries? What are my things that are actually meant to kill You know, my hard targets, my things like that? I, I literally checklist off all of these things and make sure that I at least have the 
the opportunity to win before I get to the tournament. If you have a, a list that you don't know any of the secondaries you're going to take or how you're going to take them, you're not going to consistently win at the tournament because you're. It, it's not about just running out and killing your opponent. It's about scoring points at the tournament. So each game you're, you're scoring, if I play Daniels Harlequins and I kill 90% of his army, but he always took you know primary on it, and he scored his engage, his uh, his scratches, whatever you know banners, and he scores a bunch of points. But all I tried to do is kill him the entire game, and I was always out of position because I didn't come in with a game plan uh, and an army plan that basically sets me up for an actual chance to win the game. It doesn't make any difference at all. So basically, before you play a game, you should at least have a general plan. So so uh, and does that, do that plan? So does that plan take? Oh, that's awesome. My freaking backdrop just fell off. Um, does that plan take into consideration then the primary um, and secondaries? Both? You have a plan for how are you moving up the board, how are you taking board control, and then what secondaries to pick and how to execute them? Exactly. 100%. You should have, your, your army should be built around how you're going to score, period. I mean, that's it's not going to be the exact same every time, but you should at least have the an, you know basically a, a, a general game plan of how I'm going to play. Yep. Period. How I'm going to win, you know what I mean? Because otherwise, what's <laughs> you're not going to. If you have no plan at all, like no win condition, you're you're not going to win. So, so, you're so not to summarize, have a to win. so to summarize preparation, we talked through a couple of things. I just want to make sure if we if we can touch on anything else, let's do it. But we talked about playing with some of the best people in your area or people at your skill level, so that you're constantly growing and getting better um, at the game. Um, number two, we talked about you know, making sure that you take into consideration what your opponents are going to be bringing to the tournament. What, what do you expect to see on the other side? How are army lists constructed right now? We, we often refer to this as the meta. Um, I think it's a very broad generalization of what we're, what we mean by that word, but, um, but evaluating the, uh, the, the, what our opponents are going to bring to the table is key. And then building a list around what we expect to see and how we plan to fight it. So Brad, I think that goes into what you said, right? So when you're building your list, you should have a plan for primary secondaries, but also how to counter what you expect, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 100%. Yeah. You should probably always be able to pick two secondaries, no matter what your opponent is playing. Oh, 100%. That's a good that's, plan. That's yeah. huge. That's yeah. a good yeah, plan. Yeah. Sure. It's always so, really hard when you run no into No matter opponent. what you're facing, you have your two secondaries you can always pick straight off, you know, no matter what you're facing. It's like, I, I always want to take uh, engage on all fronts and, and scramblers, for yeah. example. Yeah. I always take those. Yeah. Or if there's a lot of objectives, I always take engage on all fronts and banners because then I get, you know, the chance of placing more banners than just the 10 points. Yeah, I designed uh, a list when I went to Toledo. I made sure I had a list that could do engage and banners every single game because I had enough boys yeah. to do banners and guarantee it pretty much. And then I had engage guaranteed 15, yeah. which I maxed the yeah. entire tournament, which was awesome. And then the, the third one, it's really nice if you can have that one as well without, uh, you know, engaging with your yeah. opponent. For example, while Ooh. we stand to fight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, oath, oath while we stand we fight i think yeah. the psychic ones depending on your army are really easy depending on your army uh, like yeah. horrors but, horrors and demons for example can yeah. pretty much guarantee that one but typically if you don't have that second one built into your army your opponent will probably have stuff that will allow you to pick one one uh, the third secondary there or you can pick the mission secondary they typically suck i think but there are some okay ones like vital intelligence digital mapping or whatever it's like, called and stuff like take the two objectives in your corners and then take the one your opponent oh, has shut up yeah. <laughs> it's so impossible except for you got 15 on it never mind <laughs> <laughs> but um i mean yeah, now we're talking about uh, something that is really hard it's like learn your opponent's army and build an army yourself that can uh you know meet any type of army so we're talking about a really s strong so yeah i i will be i will but, but it's important it's feel about skewing army lists well like, let, let me let me really quick talk on what you just said though daniel really quick let yeah. me talk about that so yeah we i want to be very transparent with kind of the approach here we're giving feedback at all levels obviously if you're a two and three player or a one and four player you're going to be learning these skills you're going to be learning i'm coming up with an army list 
I'm, I think this is a good army list against the meta. I think this is a good army list against what I expect to see. Don't be upset when you see something you didn't expect because that's, that's kind of where you're at in the game. You're going to see things you don't expect depending on your local area, depending on the tournament you went to, if you traveled or not. Um, you know, you're going to see things. So don't get discouraged. Just keep building that, that approach because the best players in the country all started somewhere and they, they've done that exact approach ever since the beginning. They've been trying to build lists that are, you know, cutting edge of the meta. They become the meta, right? If you're, if you're one of the best people at doing what we're recommending here, you, you essentially set the meta, you set the bar, you bring the list that no one expected at all. No one knows how to play against. That's really kind of the, um, that's kind of the top, top tier uh, players who, who are doing that kind of stuff, but there's no reason you can't try to do that and build those skills. So go ahead, Daniel. I think you were pivoting to Space Marines there. No, no. Uh, so I'm I, what I'm saying. It's it's. Uh, I I would say that only a few codexes have the actual uh, uh, tool set to be take all comers, win tournaments without luck. You know, building that super list. And that's the top tier armies. Maybe Sisters of Battle, Space Marines, um, Admech, may, maybe Harlequins, maybe, I don't know. But, you know, uh, there's a few armies that are there. What do you guys think about, okay, I want to play my Grey Knights. Can I skew my list and say, okay, if I play, I don't know, Harlequins, I'm fucked, but I've skewed it so much. So if I play all the other top tier armies, I'm going to win. Is that a good plan or a bad plan? I think it's it depends. It work. I mean, TJ did that this weekend, by the way, at the yeah. uh, Fredericksburg tournament. He literally just said, uh, "I'm I'm really really good against everything except for these uh, basically like admac lists and maybe some of the guard." But he's really really good against Marines and Harlequins and stuff like that. And he ended up going all the way through. So yeah. sometimes that can work, yeah. especially if you... you have a codex that uh, may be not at you know the top top tier, yeah. but is a good codex but it has some weaknesses, sometimes you just go really into your strengths. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's what I'm saying also. So if I'm a one and four player, I play, I don't know. 100% should do I, it. I play Tyranids right now. Yeah, you should 100% do it. It's not a top tier list. I should build on my strengths and say, if I meet this and this, I'm going to lose anyway, even if I take a take all commerce list. So I'm going to build into my strengths and try to go four and one. Yeah. And play and play that game as best as you can get as many yeah. points as you can learn from the yeah. game, learn what crushes your army. But yeah, it depends on the, the, the group you're in. So if you're a one and four player, you should definitely build towards the strengths of your army list. You should do all the things we said earlier, but you should, you should skew your approach to your army list based on what you expect to see the most. If you know your local area has a ton of Marine players, then skew towards Marines. If you know the best guy in your yep. area is an orc player, skew towards orcs. Uh, that's yep. totally fine to do that so that you have somewhat of an advantage going into the event and you can learn, you can learn how changing your yep. list makes it better. I would say two and three players, same thing, three and two players, same thing. Uh, once you get to four and one though, I think then you yep. should really be considering putting your gray Knights on the shelf and playing one of the armies that actually matters um, on, if, if your intent is to get better, because the only thing you could do at four and one is become five and oh, and if you're five and oh, you're, you're trying to win the event. And if you're trying to win the event, you should be playing one of the top five, top six lists that have a chance to win. Would you agree? It, well, right now it's so crazy though, because so many things have a chance to win. Yeah, yeah. right now there's a lot of things that have a chance to win. So that, that is really nice. But, um, but then the thing is, is the same philosophy though goes into all of your list doesn't matter yeah. if you have the worst codex or the best codex yep. you still need to have you know a plan those two secondaries minimum you know that you take almost every time yeah. how you're going to take the primary how you're going to take your secondaries yep. it doesn't matter if you have the best list or the worst list you should at least have yep. that as before you showed up to that tournament yep. so yep. and the thing is guys is man talk through your practice games is such a huge deal. So let's, uh, let's jump over to execution then, Brad. So talking to, I'm, and I consider execution, both executing your strategy in a practice game. Like I have practice games sometimes that are practice for a tournament, right? They're like, Hey, this is a practice game, but we're going to consider it a tournament game because the tournament's tomorrow or the tournament's this weekend or whatever it is. Right. So let's talk through execution. Now you've created your plan. You kind of know what to expect. Maybe, maybe you even have the army lists up on uh, the app. Um, uh, best coast and you can see uh, you can see who's playing what and what their lists are and you're ready to go and you, your list is locked now you can't change your list 
Now it's now your strategy and your list are set. How do you ensure proper execution? I actually, I'm going to go with Adam's question on this too, because it's, I think it's a big thing that people do all the time. And I think that you should be playing with it in your practice games. He goes, what should players avoid doing to stop falling back with their progress? A lot of times, what does this, any, when you're playing, and I talk through it right now, uh, hell, when you and I play games, we come over to your house. We go, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm trying to do for this turn. You know, this is what I'm trying to do. We talk through our our plan for the turn and what we're going to do. But the thing is, is you should be talking through the, both those things and why, what am I, if, what if, yeah, what does this move help me do? Is it, is it scoring me more points? Is it denying points? Because points, because I see a lot of the base things that people do all the time is I'm playing against Daniel right now and I just move a unit onto an objective. That unit has absolutely no chance at surviving till the next turn. So I've now just given away an OPSEC unit, a unit yep. that could have contested for no reason when I could have waited, been more patient, done, blocked out, uh, reserve, uh, made, made it so you couldn't bring in a deep strike where you wanted to go. You have to ask yourself, am I, am I denying you points? If I sacrifice a unit but I take five points away from Daniel, that's a good play. If I just run out to the middle – for no reason, well, that's a bad play because I just I now have less resources than I have before, and I think that's what like basically one I of the number one the problems. Yeah. yeah, you just see that's the I difference that in the, the top tables. People are so focused on standing on all the objectives. Like, why do you stand on five objectives when you need two to get ten points? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> sacrifice too many units. Two to get fifteen points yeah. if you can make me only stand on one. We call right. this we call this blowing the load too soon. Yeah, <laughs> it, but you see, that's like one of the main things. But that also helps when you you talk through. Like a lot of people play their practice games just to win and try to guide. They, you don't don't gotcha in practice, guys. You should be running through <laughs> why you're doing something. Like you know, is that a good move or not? Like talk through it with your opponent. You like literally go, hey, is is this a good move right now? Is this gonna is this benefiting me in points or is this just losing me? Uh, you know, models, resources through the game. And that's talking through it and playing more is going to make it so that you're just not doing that play. But I see that play consistently all the time in tournaments where people just run up and they're just standing on an objective that gives them absolutely no more, more, no, no more points. They won't be there. You're like, that's not happening. If you have uh, a Death Star type, a very durable thing where you're trying to take the middle, Different question, but why why sacrifice your resources for no gain when I could wait a turn, run up, deny an objective, gain five points? These games are going down to five or ten point swings. So, yep. you know, why don't I have that unit that could maybe also get me a secondary? I'll hide, get one more point, and engage. So, so again, the, the, these are all these are all strategies that you should have in that plan that we were talking about earlier. Though you should you should kind of understand this from a plan. So how, how do you go about executing the plan? What do you do when, let's, say, let's start with a mistake. Let's say you're in a tournament, you make a mistake. A lot of players, when they make a mistake, shut down. They, or or I, would even, I would even consider bad dice a part of a mistake. Let's say, for example, you did something, you thought it was a good idea, dice came out bad, or, or dice just came out bad and it was a good idea mathematically. But let's yeah. say something changed. You made a mistake or the dice changed. How, how do players who end up winning events stay in that game why don't, why don't we talk never, through that? never rely on one unit to do one thing does so that mean does that mean have a, I, have I a plan b yeah I, so i typically and line c up c and d <laughs> yeah exactly so i typically line up my army so what do i have to kill this turn so i line up my army so everything can kill what i have to kill and then i i line it line it up so if i kill this early on in the shooting phase, for example, what secondary targets can I pick off? But never do like, yeah, I put this unit to kill that unit and this unit to kill that unit because I, you know, when that unit doesn't kill that unit, it happens all the time, uh, then suddenly you're fucked because that unit was the most chargey unit and it's gonna strike through your midfield and come, you know. Uh, so always have a plan B and C for, for like the main targets. Typically you have one or two things that have to die from your opponent. Make sure that you can overkill those. And when they're dead, 
it's nice if you can shoot at something else, but typically uh, there's like a few targets that you have to kill every turn. And make sure that those are actual things that are giving you points. You know, you're taking something off holding an objective as opposed to killing something you just think is scary. Yeah, but, yeah, but that, <clears throat> that's that's a truth with, with um, you know, it's not the entire truth, actually, because sometimes there's something that is going to shoot you off the board if it's still alive. When True, but, but, you're but that, that goes into another thing, though, that you should be doing, yeah. which is when you're, when you're going to shoot at things or attack things or whatever, you should be trying to trying to as much as possible get the least amount of shots back in return yeah, yeah. so yeah. so if you're assaulting you want to end that assault if you if you're drawing somebody into your assault you want to make sure they're coming to the other side of walls so that you can then counter with little to yeah. no reciprocation and you know and damage uh, and don't just stand out in the middle of nowhere again same thing with the objectives there's no you should always be just taking exactly how much you need to kill whatever that target is you need to kill and don't just walk out into the middle and do that either. Cause it's, it's frustrating. I mean, that's why things like uh Harley Quinn's for instance, are, are super frustrating a lot because they have a lot of movement abilities so that they can surgically strike a small part of your army. And then you have to overcommit to maybe don't have the same amount of movement to get back to where they are. They are. So that's just yeah. a, that's why that army on paper, that army doesn't look as scary, but then it, it has the ability to do things because movement is such a big ninth edition. So yeah. you have to make decisions looking forward again, looking forward to your how am I winning the game? That whole that plan of I need to take my secondaries. I need to take I like, know, contest or take my primaries. A couple of things I'm taking away from this one was I like Daniel's Daniel's thing. I, I do the same thing, Daniel. I didn't even realize I was doing it. But yeah, if you need to kill something, if something is pivotal, like your opponent's holding three objectives, you're holding three objectives, you need to get them off one. So you've, you've nominated this target as the easiest for me to kill mathematically. I'm going to position myself so I have as many units that can kill this target. Um, I like that a lot. That's a really good, uh, really good strategy of having a backup plan. And then, okay, if I kill it early, you know, I'm trying to kill it early. So knowing that, let me shoot with the units farthest in the back. Let me shoot with yeah, these guys exactly. here. You yeah. know, don't line up. Don't line up one thing. Even though mathematically you're like, this thing should kill this thing. Yeah. Have a strategy where if it doesn't, I have something else. I could do something else. I could do something else. And yeah. I, think, I think an extra add on to that is look where you can get free movement. Look where there is a potential way of like, maybe I don't need yeah. to kill this. Maybe I can charge this and get farther up yeah. the board. And yeah. maybe I can I can weaken it so that when I charge it, I can potentially kill it in combat, even if this unit isn't intended for assault. Um, yeah. So I think those are all really good, really good concepts. Or, I, or will, the, will the assault actually put you in a better position? So maybe, might, yeah. maybe charging gets you behind the wall, but yeah. behind the LOS blocking. You know what I mean? So yeah. I would, you know, a lot of times you just have to look at the board state or... Will the, will uh, making this charge get me uh, an extra point and engage? You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the other thing I wanted to focus on, and I was kind of leaning towards it, you guys went a different way, which was totally fine, um, which was more around kind of executing the plan, executing the strategy, and then having backup plans on execution. Another thing I was talking about was keep your head in the game. I think a lot of players, when I see them roll – and they have a bad role or they make a mistake and, and like for example they get wrapped back in the day or whatever just keep your head in the game your opponent could have a bad role your opponent could also make a mistake that you can now you can now you know take full advantage of games can turn really quickly um so just keep you know keep it keep that plan we talked about earlier in mind keep your execution towards the plan as the goal but if things start to 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 teeter off during the game just keep your head in the game don't worry about what happened and just keep moving oh. forward on the execution strategy. We, I think. Daniel, 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 we had that game, Daniel. Yeah. The, yeah the, we, he, we, we literally played an adept account and everything was going uh, my way in the beginning. But but he just kept looking at the board and kept playing and kept playing. And then at the very end of the game, I had the opportunity uh, to win the game with a couple of rolls. But like it, it, my, everything had been rolling my way the whole game. But he just kept trying to keep, put himself in the position to score the most points and to win, even though the dice weren't his friend for uh, multiple turns. Uh, and then still at the very end, you know, last turn of the game still had the opportunity to win. You know what I mean? So like, that's, that's a real thing that just, if you just stick with that game, you still give yourself that opportunity. Don't just curl up in a ball and go, I won. Yeah. It yeah. was the Adepticon game where Daniel and I both played a mission that didn't exist. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's funny. <laughs> and I almost won the non-existing game. Exactly. So <laughs> the, 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 no, the game but, that we uh, made up. <laughs> what you're talking about, Alan, I see that a lot as well. A lot of players that give up. You know, in turn three, it's like, yeah, I give up. I don't... Uh, if, if you're... Uh, tier one or you know if you're a four and one and four player or two and three player take the opportunity to play the game right you're gonna learn stuff yeah, be, yeah even if you end up losing the that game, game you're gonna learn you know even if you lose it might be you know the other player might be a lot better than you and he knew he would win from the first turn basically because he, he understood that you weren't as skilled but then take the opportunity to focus and see what, what the other player is doing. You're definitely going to learn something, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm going to applause that. That, gets, applause that, that. that, that gets, was the best thing that, said so That gets far. an applause, yeah. No, I think a lot of people are, are really bummed out when they lose, but uh, losing is, is a really good a, a good way to learn kind of, you know, the best way to learn. You if did. you don't lose, everybody loses games. Anybody says they don't lose games is not playing any games. So, cause that's when you, you find out that you have a weakness in your yeah. army. I'm, I'm not going to lie. If I was tournament prepping for a big tournament, I was going to, you know, LVO Nova and everything else. And I only won every game. I would be terrified. I hate that. It. Yeah. yeah I, that, I, that I'm completely missing something. Uh, yeah. That's going to be exposed when I get to that big tournament. Yeah, like, yeah I like, hate it so much. Like beating Andrew Gagne's army that you mathematically can't lose to, but that's fine. We'll we'll skip that topic <sighs> st- for now. Still too soon. <laughs> um, let's let's pivot now. I think we've talked about preparation um, in in detail. We talked about execution. There's one more preparation I think we missed, let's, and let's you touched base on it before. Let's go. Look, let's let's go to it in a sec. Look, I, I, let, let me let me just let me just talk about the losing part that we were just on right now. Yeah. So we were just talking about how when you lose, you should you should walk away from it. So let's pivot. Let's pivot to like lessons learned or how we approach the game after, after the event. But before we start on that, let's talk about the the last thing for prep. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, you you touched base on it before. Uh, go into the um, app, check out the lists, yeah. and spend an hour just figuring out what the list does. Yep. Especially if there's you know. a guy named Steven Glansberg, you may want to check out yeah. his list. <laughs> Screw that guy. He's my uh, nemesis. Yeah. He, I, I try to look at all lists and then I sort of mark the ones I don't understand. Yep. It's like, is this just a crappy list or yep. am I missing something? Yep. And then I go back, go over it with the codex. And another. Just to try to figure out, okay, so he's playing on these two stratagems. He has this shenanigan. Okay, this could be a viable list, yada, yada. And you another know, good thing is go to do it. player, player, Daniel. You could also target the player. You knew the player's name, so you could figure out, like, okay, Steven Glansberg, he's yeah. undefeated in ITC. He's perfect score, max battle points possible, five out of five. Um, you know, you'd be like, wow, I really need to evaluate this player. Um, yeah. you know, and then you can see Brad Chester, who's, you know, he's pretty good. He's, he's got all his wins in the same tournament, but nowhere near battle points. So you're like, okay, <laughs> how, how good is he? Um, and you could evaluate, you know, players lists based on, you know, your perception of their skill. So, yeah, I think that's, that's a, a lot good point. of players do that. I try not to do that that much. I mean, obviously I'm doing that as well because there's Liar. some players in my local meta I'm more afraid of than others, but I try to look at lists, yeah. uh, in general, like I think the lists are good out, to do. Okay, anyways, so he's yeah. playing this list. I know what that does. I know the stratagems. Yep. So I'm more focused on the other players that are playing funky lists that, that I haven't seen. So so after losing a game in an event, um, you know, and you walk away from the tournament, I, I often, you know, I, I, I kind of want to make a spoof video about it. But like, we've all been to events and tournaments. We walk around after our event. We walk, we leave our table. We see someone we know. They go, how'd you do? ah, oh, man, it's dice, or, oh, he went first, or, ah, oh, man, I just rolled like shit, or, you know, like, the, whenever I hear someone lose, it's never, I lost because my list wasn't, like, what it could have been, or I lost because I didn't know what they were going to do, yeah. and they surprised me. I've never heard anyone say that, really. They, they I, always, I say it all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, I don't see you at game. events. I don't see you at events very often. It's a skill, skill based so, army. I like skill. <laughs> the last time I saw you at an event, Daniel, was the Adepticon team tournament, and we were teammates. Yeah. And you didn't yeah. you didn't have to tell me about any of your losses because we won all of our games. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's I, the easiest I don't, way to go about it. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a story about to reflect about that. So, but uh, but last time I talked to Brad at LVO, it was all about you know he failed an armor save. That's all oh, I heard. Shut I heard. up! Just <laughs> shut up! <laughs> I I, uh, I think that's uh, that's the wrong takeaway from a from a lost game. Uh, 
you know, failing failing dice rolls, that's part of it. If you're positioned so you lose if you fail some rolls, then you basically lost the game before you rolled it. Oh, shots fired. It, shots I fired. actually like... I'm, the, I'm not talking about your game, I'm just Brad. kidding. I'm, I'm just talking kidding. about in general. In general, yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually because like that, that I, means you don't have any second plan. You don't have any backup for that objective. You you you've basically positioned well, yourself. To, to be fair, and then you to, hope you won't roll a one or a two. But to know? be fair, yeah. Daniel, some games do come down to a single dice roll sometimes because it's just such a oh, tight game. You know, I like think the score yeah. is really. Oh, close. Of course, of course. I, I love the the after. I think some of the best times that you uh, get some of your best insights are after a large tournament because you've played against things that you didn't didn't see before. Uh, you've got more knowledge, and the knowledge is fresh, and you're with other people that might have different things too. I love the the last day of a tournament, uh, going out to eat, hanging out, the drive home, the the plane home, the whatever. I mean, we made my entire army uh, for Nova in the trying to get through customs on the way back from ETC the one year just because it's every we had so much knowledge you know you just everything was right there we had all the teams you have all these new new looks and everything else so you're just always very everything's in your mind i just love it you know what i mean because you have it though because you've 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 won a game you lost a game you've done whatever but you've seen things that maybe your army didn't do as well and how do i fix that for the next time how do i make it five percent ten percent better so, not maybe faster you so know? do you go do you typically go all the way back to the prep stage so after the event you go back to prep and you restart i i know we've done that before brad so i'm just asking you directly like is that typically where you go yeah a lot of times well, it depends on what what your your timetable is too you know are you are you uh fine-tuning a specific list or are you going back to the drawing board Change. because you think yeah because you don't think that your list does well in the existing meta or is is uh not achieving like you want it to is is my army not fast enough basically say for instance ninth edition yep. can i not get to the objectives and the secondaries enough maybe i need to stop playing uh, a stationary type army so do maybe you, i have to so go do completely you, do you, back to the so drawing do you board. have to evaluate like going off of kind of our table of contents that we've been doing for this episode do you, do, you, do you necessarily think that if, uh, if, you, if you see a problem in the execution step, so you, your problem was actually executing your plan, um, you know, do you think it's often going to be, I made a mistake in the game, or could it also be something where uh, there's a mistake in my army list? My army design is bad. I have to go back oh, to that part. Definitely be both. both. Yeah. And the thing is that sometimes I take, I take things, and we talk about this before, there's, there's things that are tournament fatigue. I'm an old man. If I want to win nine games, I have to take uh, – for certain things that give me redundancy. I need to, like Daniel was saying, I need another another unit that's going to take that objective. I need, for me, uh, infiltrators are a big thing for me because uh, they can help out with even slightly wrong movement so I can push out a little bit more, uh, things of that nature. Maybe you want to take two things that can take your scramblers every game. You know, you don't want to just uh, rely on that one thing because if something could go wrong, you could make a small error. You want to make sure that you can come back from that air and maybe you want to list adjust to make sure that uh, the list is the most optimum thing you can bring. You know what I mean? Or you could say that I think that my player skill is better than my list. You know what I mean? And my list needs to be a little bit better, you know, so yeah. it could be a, a, a little bit both. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. Uh, I, I, for, me, for me, there's like two phases. Uh, either it's a hardening phase where I actually look at my list and try to harden it. Uh, this is or, already this is already a very Viking approach to this. I love it. Go, keep going. Or Just keep talking. It's a redesign, and then I oh, go back. Man, to I thought it was. I thought you were going to say sharpening. <laughs> <laughs> I literally thought you were going to make a make a like an axe joke. sword, yeah, like an axe. axe, like a Viking axe joke. Like no, but I, I spent a lot hardening. of time hardening lists, so now I'm playing the Harlequins. So I'm only playing the same. Because I think the list is very solid in base. So now I'm only doing small, small fine tuning, changing warlord trade, changing a weapon, you know, changing a relic, and testing that out five games uh, against the different opponents and just small fine tuning. I, I typically refer to that as hardening the army list, basically. Sometimes, sometimes um, when I change a warlord trade or something small, like like you're referring to as hardening, it ends up like yeah. if it's good, if it's really good, yeah. then I, I start thinking about a whole new concept. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't know if that happens to you. That also unfortunately happens sometimes. And then I order 15 horses. and. 
But it's a big deal because sometimes you'll get on that right track, though. I think that we've done that. I mean, we've done that multiple times where we come up with, well, that we, that's how I got to the my Nova list is I was I'm running down these things and I'm like, I want I need to be able to play against the this better than I'm playing right now. And I, I think I'm going to make this change and this change and this change. And I literally did this for an eight hour flight and three hours in customs. And Alan finally went, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Orcs would literally just do this orcs. better I was like, than just, just, anything just, just that you orcs. just said in the last 11 hours. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, well, let's talk about this then. And then we got a list that worked really well for me for that tournament because that's, you know, what all the things that I wanted to do were actually better at the time for that faction. So yeah, it was so good. It, 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 you know, it just works out. Sometimes, you know, you have to have, you talk to people that know things, you know what I mean, that are, have played with that experience. That's the whole play testing and, uh, knowing the armies is that there was another option for me besides what I was currently playing, yep. you know, that I, and then I threw down that. Yeah, I know it's a really, really valid point. So I think we got, let's do some questions. If we have any in the chat, I know I saw one from Rick James on maximizing your results when you're in a rock, paper, scissors kind of match. And you're, I, I'm assuming he's saying that he's like the scissors when he's fighting the rock uh, and how to maximize points. So we talked about it earlier I texted uh, it a little, I put it in the chat a little bit. Well, part of the response. Yeah, I saw that, which is which is having those secondaries in mind. So that's all a part of that preparation set, step, which is the beginning of the podcast where we talked about kind of creating a prepara- uh, creating a, an approach or a strategy, uh, and then you're going to execute on that strategy and approach. And and a part of it was you know making sure you have the right secondaries, making sure your army list is designed to to achieve those secondaries. And then having an overall strategy for how you're gonna how you're gonna approach primary. Are you is your army an aggressive army which is gonna take away your opponent's objectives? Is your army an army that is gonna hold your objectives very well and reserves are gonna come in to challenge your opponent's objectives? Or are you an army that's gonna shoot your opponent off objectives? Right? Those are typically the three different types of archetypes you'll you'll see in the game. And there'll there'll probably be a fourth, which is an overall balanced approach um to, to to the strategy but um yeah you know making sure that you create that strategy ahead of time is, is the key and then we just talked about now learning from you know execution mistakes so that was kind of where we were focused on now i i think to maximize uh, your points in bad matchups that's really what learning comes from so play that game a lot you don't yeah. have to play games you know you'll win play games you know you lose and figure out what happens if i go first what happens if I go second? Yeah. What happens if I'm aggressive? What happens if I'm defensive? You know, uh, what happens if I reserve half the army? Just try those scenarios out. That's typically, it's very, it's a very different play style. Uh, and I know a lot of people struggle with it at the WTC or the ETC, especially from, you know, new players, because there you have to train to conserve points in a horrible matchup. Yep. So that's I, I think that's the best way to train. You don't have to practice winning bigger against p- shit you already beat. Practice to lose smaller against shit you know you lose against. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. And I don't, I don't I don't see another question, so I'll just give some bonus content. You know, we don't have a Patreon only or a fans only page, so I'll just give some bonus content here. Um, things that I do. Well, Brad has a Patreon for Brad. Uh, we do have a gentleman gaming Patreon starting up, uh, and that's basically Brad's consulting services through GG. <laughs> um, so that's that's on Patreon right now too, if you're interested. Um, and yeah, and if you can't find quality players or you need extra help, you know, I I do highly recommend reaching out to any of the groups that are doing uh, some of that coaching servicing, uh, which I think for the the amount of money that they're charging versus the time that it takes to actually teach people this this kind of stuff is uh, is, is almost minimum wage, if not less. Um, so what I was going to add on to this, uh, no offense, Brad, but, <laughs> but I'm just being real, right? Like the, you, you spend like hours with people to teach them things. And like, they're like, do I really have to give you 50 bucks or whatever? And it's like, yeah, bro, you have to give me 50 bucks. So anyways, um, what I was going to add, uh, what Salt I was going to add the sandwich. Yeah, no, you're good though. You, you're doing, you're doing, you're killing it, man. Um, what I would add though, is two things that we didn't talk about. The first thing that I would add is deployment. We did not talk about deployment and how important deployment is. It, it should be a part. It should be a part of your execution, uh, part of the thing, and it should be a part of your overall strategy in terms of preparation. Um, deployment yep. is so important that I highly recommend that even though you can't get in games, deploy your army list a couple times. Literally go through all the missions, 
put terrain on your board at home or put terrain at your local store and just deploy your army, deploy your army, deploy. Yeah. That's understand the, the square the, footage. The, understand the, the square your, footage your, that's your base take up. That I was talking about, Alan, though, is like if you're deploying and you can't get to those, you don't have things that can get to the mid-game objectives on turn one or turn two, well, you need to fix that because you're not going to win then. So how you are you? Could, you could do that you mathematically. Right? In your head, right. you could be that's like, I can get there. But you, you have to put it on the board, though, and yeah. say, where am I going to go? And, and a lot of times, this is how I've made my armies tend to go a little bit faster now because I go, if I have you know only terrain that's in my backfield type thing, how am I getting engaged? How am I doing this? Well, I'm going to need more fast. I need more units that can move. So I, I change the roster. So yeah. I have more jump packs, more bikes, maybe, you know, just more forward deploying yeah. things. That's 100%. how you get to that is put, once you deploy. Your put, army. put your models on the board, even if you're not playing against another person, just put them on the board, see how they fit behind ruins, see how much space they take up, understand your power levels, understand what I can put in reserves. What am I, what am I legally allowed to put in reserves as the max? What am I legally allowed to, you know, to, to put in the reserves based on the power level and the points? Cause now they're both a part of the game. Um, and then figure out how well does my army list hide? How susceptible is my army list to first turn shooting? What, what extra strategies do I have? That's number one. I would say that is very, very important. Um, and what's then, your footprint? Yeah, it's what's huge. your footprint? Yeah, square footage of the army, exactly. Um, the, the next thing that I would say, or square inches, I guess, in this case. Um, the next, the second bonus thing that I was going to say that I, I, don't, I don't know if anyone does this. I, I do this, but I don't, I don't know if anyone else does. I, I basically will, in, in large tournaments, you know, six-round events or higher, I will create almost a cheat sheet for exactly what all of my abilities are, how I plan to spend my CP, yeah. almost as if they're earmarked, right? I know I'm spending yeah. my CP on this, 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 and this, so I'm not wasting it on this reroll right now. I know that I have to use these. I know that I'm going to move in this way. I know that I'm going to... So I literally will create a cheat sheet with, a f with, like, a square for the map, and I will, like, walk through how the army uh, will intend to be played on the cheat sheet. And on the back, I'll have my strats that I want to use. I'll have all of my secret abilities. If I'm playing sisters, I'll have all my miracle dice abilities. I'll have all of that with me at the event or at the practice game or whatever um, because it, it really does help. I, I highly recommend it a lot. Your, your cards have been super helpful in the past. So there they are, super, super helpful. Yeah. Having your stuff well, is a big deal. It's like having an open book quiz and you're like, nah, I'm good. No. Yeah. <laughs> your notes, bro. Come on. Two two other points. Uh, I, since you guys play heavily on the clock, or at least that's my that's my experience. Uh, bring like you know ten red dice, ten blue dice, ten green dice, so you actually can roll dice fast. So you don't have to spend really time counting your fucking dice, which is time you want to spend. You know, thinking about strategic moves you should do yep. because it helps a lot. If you have like I have thirty dice, I have twenty red and ten blue, then I just no, I just there's yeah. two red left, so I have eighteen blue in my hand, red I, in my hand. I think know? the dice, the dice thing is for everyone. I think you should also practice practice playing with a clock if you're a four and one player. If you're a four and one player yep. trying to be a five and zero oh player, or a five and one player trying to be a six and zero oh player, if you're at that skill level, definitely practice with a clock. That's definitely my my weakest area of my game is the clock. Um, I, I would say that's true for a lot of people. So, I mean, Brad, Brad actually asked for a TO to manage his clock once. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm terrible. I'm horrible at the clock. And when we say, when we say we're bad at the clock, it's not that we are slow at the game. We are very fast at the game. All of us actually are very fast at the game. But the problem with the clock is that you don't always click it when it's your opponent's time. So often my opponent will be doing actions that are on my oh, wow. time. And it eats my time as if I'm playing, but really they're playing. I'm just very bad at clicking it on. There are some yeah. people that are so good at the clock that they literally roll their hits, roll their wounds, click the clock. It's almost like inherent. They're just, and they don't even pick up their dice. It's just like six wounds, clock. And you, you're like now like, oh, I got to get six dice. I got to roll saves. I got to click the clock back. Like if you forget just one time and lose five minutes, it could cost you a whole game. I've lost games just because I've clocked out. That's caused me the, to lose the entire game where I'm winning big, like I'm like massively winning. So, yeah. second thing I wanted to touch base on is um, you were talking about deployment. If you're in a position where you're gonna win, the, where you think you have a good chance, or you know you're gonna win the game, don't ever deploy to go first. I yeah. think that's a hundred percent accurate. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. If you if you think on paper your army is better, yeah, deploy 
deploy reserve, to deploy like in a counter strategy and give your yeah. opponent first turn. 100% yeah. agree. And if you think your army list is at a disadvantage and you see your opponent doing that, force them to go first. Yeah. Now, if you ever see your opponent deploy in a way that's like, if you're looking at the board and you're like, man, I got to go first. I got to go first. I got to go first. My army needs to go first. And then you look over and your opponent put everything in a much more reserved standpoint. You're like, what am I going to do first turn? Well, I mean, it's still important for me to go first. I'm going to take it. Don't, don't do that. Look at what your opponent has. What type of damage can they do on turn one? What type of damage do the reserves do on their, when the reserves turn comes in? Cause sometimes you can block out reserves easier by going yeah. second. Because you, you could literally just say, all right, his reserves are going to come out them. first. Force his reserves to come out. Literally turtle up, hold the objectives you're going to hold, force his reserves, and then counter his reserves. And yours are going to come out second no matter what you want. Me and Brad at Toledo, we just talked. We said, whichever one of us goes second wins this game. Because if I go yep. second, all my chin or cop does come on on the bottom of three. And if he goes second, he basically brings on all his reserves and kills all my stuff instantaneously in a single turn. So we literally just... We, we knew that was going to happen. So my goal was to avoid him the entire time so I can ridicule him by beating him in the overall event. And it worked fantastically. So Because if I played him, it was a dice roll. Flawless victory. And, I mean, this goes also back to the other preparations of uh, if, if you know your list have weaknesses, sometimes it could be... I mean, this depends on your play style, but I know both you and me, Alan, we can skew the board with objectives before... <sighs> Uh, so if that's you know gone, you're that's losing, gone now though because the board the yeah, yeah, are I set know, but now, yeah. you, you can still do the same thing with okay I know I'm going to lose this game because I've practiced unless I deploy super offensively do this and go first Yeah. then it's up to you do you want to conserve some points and, and get you know yeah. a smaller loss or do you want to go for the win Yeah. I typically go for the win I'm not saying it's the best but so when you win it's a lot more fun. My, my next team jersey is going to say no scramblers on the back right here. Yeah, oh, screw you. Scramblers lost me that damn tournament. But I, I, oh! I think I think we've given we've given everything. Those are our bonus tips, guys. Um, we do have a couple more questions. Play with list. Uh, no, that's just the comments. Um, I think I saw a question from someone earlier. Richard, I think. How many times do you guys play games trying to maximize and end up winning because opponents think so they will like just win? And you hold them off with stupid shit, logics, and strategies. Yes, happens all the time. Play the games out. Always play the games out. So, especially a lot of people don't understand that. Like, I'll just if like Daniel's playing like an army that's super strong against me, I'll just play a hundred percent on like one flank because I know that I can't challenge his entire army. Yep. And they just nickel and dime points until the end. Yep. Hit them hard there. All right, well, that's that's today's podcast, guys. Uh, feel free to like us on Facebook, subscribe, and like us on YouTube. This podcast will also be on YouTube, and we're going to start putting these out on Podbean as well um, and sending them out uh, through, through audio versions. So thank you, guys. Thank you.